Welcome back. In the last segment of this tutorial, we broke out the entities and activities involved in the Sabrina process into a structured table that you see here. Now, before we go on, let me just point out one loose end we've got to mention. Clear at the bottom, we never added the warehouse to the entity list. We're actually sending um, an order acknowledgement to the customer, which already exists in the list up above, but we're sending a picking ticket to the warehouse. And while the warehouse doesn't perform anything, we need to include it in our entity list. That'll be important later on. So now let's, what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to iterate through this list of activities and using some criteria which we'll show you in just a minute, we are going to categorize each activity as information processing or non-information processing. Basically, we'll just bold the information processing activities. You may be wondering why we bother even to delineate between information and non-information processing activities. The answer to your question lies in the fact that performing this step makes it fairly easy to identify our internal and external entities. So minus a few data flows, the context diagram will consist of a single process bubble and our external entities. More specifically, kind of maybe splitting hairs here, external entities do not perform information processing activities related to the end goal of the process of interest as it concerns our high-level organization. So we place them outside the process. For instance, in this example, we are diagramming Saprina's order processing process. Does the Saprina customer process information? Absolutely. We can easily infer that the customer completes the order form before giving it to the sales rep. Completing the order form is a type of information processing, but we are not interested in that process processing step simply because Saprina does not do it. We only want to analyze the process details that Saprina is responsible for handling. Again, after we have identified all the information processing activities and thereby the internal and external entities, our context diagram will be easy. So before we get, begin, let's review the guidelines for identifying the information and non-information processing activities. First, an activity is considered information processing if it changes the state of the information. This can include creating, retrieving, updating, or deleting information. Second, an activity is also considered information processing if it adds value to the data. For example, Having a clerk verify the correctness of batch totals increases our confidence in the data and therefore increases the value of the data. An activity, however, is not considered information processing if it only entails the sending or receiving of data. Keep this straight from the storing and retrieving of data because we're going to consider the storage of data as well as the retrieval to be in a value adding activity. Now again, remember these are only guidelines. In the real world, as a system analyst, you will make judgments based on your contextual knowledge of the process. So it's not always clear cut, but I'm doing my best to create some guidelines that help you pick up this process of creating system documentation. So now let's begin. Remember, we're going to bold the information processing activities. The first activity says, give order to the sales rep. So the customer is giving the order to the sales rep. Is that information processing? That's right, it's not. Remember our guidelines. If the activity only involves the transmission of data, then it is not information processing. So number two, enter customer order with the laptop. By entering the information to a computer, we're changing its state from a paper-based state to a digitized computer-based state. So this is information processing. We'll go ahead and bold it. 
Number three, adds the order to the daily orders file. This activity stores data, so it's also information processing. Number four, prints the two copies of the order. So are we creating data? Not necessarily, we're just printing out the data that exists. Are we updating it? No, we aren't deleting it. But we are changing the state because we're taking it from a digitized state to a paper-based state. And so we're going to consider this information processing. Now items 5 and 6 are a good example of distinguishing between the transmission of data from the storage of data or the retrieval of data. Number 5 is the transmission of data. We give the sales order copy 1 to the customer. Number 6 is storing it. So 5 is not an information processing activity, but 6 is. What about item number 7 here? Is retrieving the day's order from a disk an information processing activity? Based on our guidelines, it is, so let's bold it. Once we retrieve the information, we actually send it to the headquarter computer. Is the transmission of data information processing? No, it's not. So let's go to 9 and 10 here. Recording the totals and orders in the customer order file, that's storing. And each morning, the computer displays the customer order to the order entry. So hopefully you recognize 10 as clearly an information processing activity. Number 11 here is a little tricky. If the computer displays information on a screen, it is changing the state of the data. Because it's changing it from a magnetic to a visual state, and in addition it's probably performing some sort of formatting and arranging of the data on the screen so the clerk can better process it, we're going to consider it an information processing activity. So let's go ahead and bold that. Now the clerk then reviews the orders and compares each of the sales reps totals with the totals provided by the computer and then notifies the headquarter computer to proceed. 12 and 13 are definitely information processing because we're validating the data. 14 is a little tricky. So think about how does the clerk notify the computer to proceed. It's probably through the push of a button or a click of a mouse. Does this click modify the data in any way or add value to it? No. It, it kind of sends a signal that it's been verified, but that verification was ha happened in steps 12 and 13. And so it's simply a necessary activity to keep the process moving. That's why we call it an operational activity. So it's not an information processing activity. However, we often want to include operational activities in the document flowchart, so we, we should keep it in the back of our mind. Now look closely at items 15 through 18. Do you see the redundancy? 16 through 18 are simply the detailed steps of 15. Perform a series of programmed edits. So we'll skip over 15 and not bold it. 16 through 18 are all a form of validation, so they are information processing activities. And hopefully you understood that items 16 through 18 basically just render 15 um, meaningless for us as far as proceeding with our diagrams. Now like 14, number 19 is also an operational activity. So the computer would notify the order entry clerk if something fails. So we'll leave it unbolded. Items 20 through 22 are information processing activities. And hopefully by now, you understand why. Now 23 and 24 both involve sending something to the customer into the warehouse. So these are not information processing activities. So now let's go ahead and zoom out 
And if we look closely, what we're looking for are those entities that never perform any information processing activities. So if we go up to the customer, first of all, do we see the customer appear anywhere else? The only place they appear is right here at the top. And the customer does not perform an information processing activity that we're concerned about. So we can identify the customer as an external entity. Now the sales rep, you see the sales rep performs activity number two, that immediately qualifies it as an internal. Down here the sales rep does other things. And even if the sales rep didn't perform an information processing activity in five or six, he has still performed one in item two, and so he's an internal entity. And you can see that all the other entities, until we get down to the warehouse, which is essentially, we, we don't put it here in item number 25, but it's essentially just receiving the picking ticket. The warehouse is an external entity because it hasn't performed any information processing activities. So there we have just completed a pass through all the activities and categorized them as information or non-information processing activities. To conclude, let's once again review the guidelines for identifying the information and non-information processing activities. First, an activity is considered information processing if it changes the state of the information. Again, this can include retrieving, creating, updating or deleting the information, but it's not limited to those activities like we saw when we printed a copy of the sales order. An activity is also considered information processing if it adds value to the data. But an activity is not considered information processing if it only entails the transmission, that is the sending or receiving of data. So this includes this segment of the tutorial, in the next few segments of the tutorial, we'll be taking this entity activity table and creating a context diagram, a physical data flow diagram, and a logical data flow diagram.